Welcome super genius people. We have some practice for the Bergen Academy's admission test. So today we're going to do three questions together from a practice sheet that we call practice sheet five. All the questions we use are real questions or realistic questions. So I hope you guys benefit from them. Remember on the test, we have easy questions, medium questions, and hard questions. You need to be able to answer all three types of questions quickly, efficiently, and without using a calculator. So in this video, we're gonna answer this question right here, which of these numbers is not equivalent to 33%, an easy fraction decimal percent question. Then we're going to move on to number three, a nice word problem also has percents involved, and we're gonna do our map hack for this one. Number four, we're gonna use, um, we're gonna do this question, which basically, uh, tests your knowledge of using fractions. And that's also an important part of the test. Now, let me just tell you guys something really quickly. Um, one very important part of what we do is we learn how to answer questions quickly, efficiently, without using a calculator. We have numerous skills and hacks um, and tips that we use in order to answer the questions um, as quickly as possible and as efficiently as possible on the test. So I hope you guys enjoy this and I hope you benefit from it. Let me know in the comments, like this video, please. And remember, we have our Bergen Academy's course courses um, online, 100% online. If you are interested in joining any of our courses, please look in the description. You'll find a link there and you can join the course. I'd love to have you with us. So let's go. Enjoy. Three questions. Write notes. Let's go. Okay, super people, here we have an easy question. The point is we need to do this question without using a calculator and we need to be able to answer this question quickly. So let's read. Which of these numbers is not equivalent to 33%? So we want the answer that is not equal to 33%. Let's start. 33% means 33 over a hundred. Okay. Now I know right away that the right answer is a why, because part of what we need to prepare before the test, when we cannot use a calculator is to memorize a number of very common popular fractions. So we should all know that one third, one over three, which is answer a is actually equal to 0.33. Three, 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 it keeps on repeating, okay? But 33% right here means I have two zeros in the denominator, so I'm moving a decimal point twice to the left. So it actually means 0 0.33. And 0 0.33 is not the same as 0 0.33333 repeating. So I know that right answer has to be A, because only one answer here is not equivalent to 33%. A. Now, let's say this wasn't the first answer. So maybe it was E, for example, that had one third. So what would we have done? We needed to check the other answers really quickly. Now, first of all, 33 over 100, 33% is the same as 0 0.33. So this can't be the answer because it's equivalent to 33%. 33 over 100 is actually what I wrote right here. So that is 33%. Now, if you look here, this is quite easy. So 33 over 100 is the same as multiplying up by 2, 66, over multiply down by 2, over 200, right? So 33 times 2, 100 times 2. So it doesn't work, still equivalent. It's also the same as multiplying the numerator by 3 and the denominator by three, it gives you 99 over 300, which is answer E. So that doesn't work as well. The only one that is not equivalent to 33% is one third because of this repeating decimal trick. Okay, super people, super easy. Okay, geniuses, let's do number three. Number three, long question, lots of words. So we have to use our keywords hack we need to read carefully and we need to draw our map as we read the question. Now, what I would typically do is read this question once quickly and then read it one more time slowly and draw my map the second time. So let's take a look, guys. 
At the wedding reception, there were 10 people sitting at each of 20 tables. And let me just say something really quickly because this is super important. Now, number one, we be, we're going to use our map hack, drawing a map for a question like this because it has lots of words. We're also going to use our keyword hack. So we're going to focus on the keywords, keyword hack. And another important hack here that I need to remind you guys of is you need to use our visualize hack. Okay, you need to visualize the story when you have a word problem. So at the wedding reception, visualize a wedding with lots of people. There were 10 people sitting at each of 20 tables. So I have lots of tables, 20 tables, 10 people sitting around each of these tables. 80 of the people left, some people left. All but 25% of those remaining got up to dance. So some people went up to dance. How many people were left sitting at the tables? Don't focus too much on the visualization, but just try to see it in your head. See a ballroom with tables, with people sitting down, with some people going out, with some people standing up to dance, okay? Now let's do our map and read this carefully. So at the wedding reception, there were 10 people sitting, keyword, at each of 20 tables. Okay, so I have 10 people times 20 tables. That's 200. And to make this easy, you need to write what the 200 resembles. So 200 people. And I put this in my box. Okay. 80 of the people left. So 80 people left. Okay. So I go in my map and I do minus 80 people. So how much is remaining now? 120 people, right? Put a box. So 200 people, take away 80 people. You're left with 120 people. Good. Move on. All but 25%. Okay, now we know this. Popular trick. All but 25. So 25% is, I don't know what, I don't know what they did yet now, but I know that all but the 25 did something. All but 25 means 100% minus 25%. So that's the 75%, okay? So all but 25 is 75% of those remaining got up to dance. So 75% dance. Okay, correct. How many people were left sitting at the table? These are the 25% no dance, right? Because the question said all but 25%, which means 75% got up to dance. And 25% stayed seated and did not go up to dance. Okay, now the question is, how many people were left sitting at the tables? So this is what I want to find out, the 25% that did not go up to dance. So it's 25% of what? Of the 120 people. Okay, so we need to find 25% of 120 people. 25% is a quarter, so do 120 divided by 2 first, that's 60, then by 2 again, because it's a quarter, that's 30, so we're left with 30 people. Answer C. Easy? Easy. Okay. Now, was there an easier way? Was there something else we could have done? Let's say this question um, was like the last question on a test, and I'm in a super, super hurry. What I could have done was, once I reached this point, and I know that 120 people were left, now some people went up to dance, 75% went up to dance, and only 25% were remaining. So can the remaining people be 120? That's impossible, because they're already 120, and some of them left, so I can eliminate E. I know that 25% only were the people remaining, and here I have 90 people. 90 can't be 25% of 120. That's too large. So it's probably wrong as well. Okay. 25% of 120. Can that be 25? Impossible. Why? Because 25% of 100 is 25. So 25% of 120 can't be 25. Wait a minute. But it has to be more than 25. So the answer has to be C. So maybe I could have guessed I could have eliminated a few answer choices, 
maybe saved a couple of seconds, but here it's pretty easy, 25% of 120. I would have used this trick, the elimination trick, if the numbers were more difficult and I can't use a calculator and the numbers, it was like 23.5% of 762,000, something like that. So it was really hard for me to try to figure out the actual answer would have taken me like 30, 40 seconds to calculate it. Maybe I could have used elimination hack in this case. Okay, geniuses? Okay, geniuses. Super people, let's do this question number four. Which is the largest? Now, remember, you can't use a calculator, and the whole point is to finish this quickly, okay? So, really quickly, when I ask you which is the largest, you need to remember one really important thing, okay? Something we call largest, smallest hack. Okay, L S H for short. Basically, what this hack says is you need to focus on finding the largest or the smallest value answer. If this is what the question is asking you about, you do not need to focus on finding the actual final answer for every one of the answer choices. Meaning, if I know that A is bigger than E, without having to calculate all of this or all of this, then I can eliminate E right away because the question is asking me for the largest answer. I don't have to find out exactly how much E equals because if it's less than another answer choice, then it's a wrong answer. That's basically what it means, okay? Okay, let's take a look. So let's start with A, five times one over three times one over four. Here's another thing that I would do to, to speed things up. I just leave fractions the way they are for now. So five times one times one is five over three times four is 12. Let's just leave it like this. Don't try to change it into a decimal. Don't try to simplify it any further. Just leave it like this for now. Okay, B, I have half times three all plus two, okay? So fraction three over two plus two. Let's just leave it like this. C, two and two cancel out. Let me just write it here so that you guys don't get mixed up. So let's change a color here so we don't get mixed up. So two times three over two divided by one over two equals. Now, if you have a two in the numerator, multiplied by something that has a two in the denominator, I can just cancel them out. So I'm left with three divided by half, okay? And when we divide by a fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal, we all know that. So three divided by half is the same as saying three times two, so it's six. Now, take a pause everybody. Largest, smallest hack. Now, C, the answer is six. A, the answer is five over 12. Five over 12 is gonna be a value smaller than one. Remember when the numerator is a number smaller than the denominator, then you have to have a final answer of something smaller than one. So it's gonna be something like 0 0.5, okay? So definitely A is smaller than C. So for now, C is better than A. How about B? Three over two plus two. Okay, three over two is one and something. It's actually one and a half, but if you don't know, take three divided by two, it's gonna be one and something, one point something. Plus two is gonna be three point something, which is still smaller than six. So we can eliminate B as well. Now, do you understand what I meant with the largest, smallest hack? It's not about finding the actual final answer. It's about just trying to figure out which is the biggest one. So far, C is good. Now, let's say this is my final attempt, final question. I just have two seconds left and I need to move on. Or this is the last question in the, in the test. You've eliminated two answers, A and B. C looks good, you can guess if you need to, okay? D, come on, come on super people. So two over three times one over two divided by one over three equals, hurry up, can we eliminate, yes, two and two here cancel out. So I'm left with one over three divided 
by 1 over 3. And here some people say, okay, so division, so we need to find the reciprocal. This is 1 third divided by 1 third. It's like saying 5 divided by 5, x divided by x, apple divided by apple, u divided by u. The answer is always going to be 1 when you divide anything by itself. So D is also wrong because C is 6, which is still the biggest one so far. Okay, let's do E right here. Now I have 0 0.2 times 2 times half times 3 over 2. Again, eliminate. So the 2 here cancels out with the 2 here. So I'm left with 0 0.2 times 3 over 2. No need to calculate any further. 3 over 2, as I said before, is 1 point something. If you multiply 1 point something by 0 point something, is it getting smaller or bigger? It's getting smaller. So the answer is going to be something smaller than 1 and a half. Impossible. Wrong. Answer is C. Okay? Geniuses. So, super people, we're done. Three easy questions. Again, as I said, on the test, you have easy questions, medium questions, hard questions. You should not only focus on practicing hard questions. You need to focus on practicing all types of questions, okay? Because this is exactly what you're going to see on the test. And a good question, an easy question, gives you one point on the test. A very hard question also gives you one point on the test. So it doesn't really matter. What matters is you need to answer as many questions as possible, as quickly as possible, as correctly as possible on the test. Remember one more time, if you'd like to join our course, link is below. Thank you, super people. See you on the next one.